Okay. Mm-hmm. I'd like to call to order the Charter Township of Oxford <clears throat> Board of Trustees regular meeting for Wednesday, December 14th, uh, 2022. If we all would please rise and play, pay respects to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, noting of the roll, please. Noted, there is a quorum. Thank you. Approval of the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda with the following amendment. Adding item 9C, the swearing in of Matthew Majestic, and then moving items 9A, B, and C to after item 6, and move everything down accordingly. A second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Any questions? Hearing, seeing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. Uh, item five, approval of the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Payne. Uh, are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Trustee Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Roy. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Item six, uh, public comment on items not on the agenda tonight. Is there any members of the public that want to speak on any item that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to the amended agenda, item nine. Uh, Fire Department, resolution for Pete Schultz. Pete, you want to come up? Mike Spiz? <laughs> That's you. As y'all know, um, Pete's retiring almost, what, 47 years? God, you had me fooled. I thought you were 48. So uh, with that, we have uh, our county commissioner, Michael Spiz, who represents our district. And uh, he has two resolutions, one from the township, one from the county. Michael? Thank you, Mr. Super- Supervisor. Thank you, Board of Trustees. And thank you, Chief. Thank you. So I will only read one of the two, not the board, but because they're very similar. So I'll start off with the one from the township. Okay. Whereas Pete, Peter Schultz joined the Oxford Fire Department on, as a paid on call member on February 9th, 1976. And whereas over the years, Schultz rose through the ranks, serving as captain, assistant chief, and deputy chief. And whereas Schultz was promoted to full time fire chief in November 2008. And whereas Chief Schultz was instrumental in shaping, guiding, and enhancing the Oxford Fire Department as it grew from a small town agency with limited resources to a modern organization capable of handling a multitude of emergency situations and threats to public safety. And whereas the Oxford Fire Department now consists of two stations filled with four ambulances, three engines, two tankers, two brush trucks, one 95-foot aerial truck, one heavy rescue truck, and four command vehicles. And whereas the Oxford Fire Department is now staffed by a mix of 25 full-time employees and 21 paid-on call members. And whereas Chief Schultz helped create the department we know today by embracing and championing change, listening to his colleagues and the public, serving on numerous committees and making thoughtful, responsible decisions. And whereas Chief Schultz consistently promoted communication, collaboration, cooperation, and coordination among the fire departments of North Oakland County, many of whom are here today, which enhanced their overall ability to protect life and property. And whereas over the course of nearly five decades, Chief Schultz responded to thousands of fire and medical calls, many of which occurred at night, on weekends, and during holidays. And whereas Chief Schultz brought new life into the world when he helped deliver a baby, William Floyd, William Floyd Cole, at a Lakeville home on December 30th, 1985. Whereas Chief Schultz received a special commendation from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office for his response to the November 30th, 2021 tra- tragedy at Oxford High School. And whereas Chief Schultz served 
as one of the Grand Marshals of the 2022 Oxford High School Homecoming Parade. And whereas Chief Schultz always led by example and is a role model and mentor to the men and women under his command. And whereas Chief Schultz's legacy will live on through the countless firefighters he has motivated, helped, trained, influenced, and befriended. And whereas Chief Schultz has helped downtown Oxford flourish economically, aesthetically, and socially through his service on the Downtown Development Authority Board, which he joined in October 2013. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Charter Township of Oxford Board of Trustees wishes to express its sincere gratitude to Chief Schultz for his tireless commitment to helping others, his unshakable loyalty, his consummate professionalism, his rock solid dependability, his decisive and unflinching leadership, his sterling character, his unquestioned integrity, and his willingness to sacrifice for the common good. Chief Schultz has led us, served us, and protected us. He made our homes, businesses, schools, churches, and public facilities safer. Oxford cannot thank Chief Schultz enough for everything he did to strengthen our community and make one of Oakland County's most desirable places to live, work, play, and visit. The Charter Township of Oxford salutes Chief Schultz and sincerely hopes he enjoys his well-deserved retirement and he will be sorely missed. We wish him nothing but the best. Thank you again, Chief. Thank you very much. that before we move on and give you a chance to speak. <laughs> I also have a proclamation from the Oakland County Board of Commissioners, which I'd like to present you to hang on your wall for all the great service you've done for this community and this county. So thank you again. Thank we you very much. It. Really it. At this time, what I'd like to do is offer up anybody in the audience that'd like to come up <clears throat> and say anything about Chief Pete, before he leaves. Oh, come on, there's got to be one story. <laughs> Wendy? <laughs> I'll go easy. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, I'll try and make it as short as possible because I, too, uh, find it uh, emotional as well. Um, Chief Schultz has been a great friend, um, a great leader. A uh, great collaborator um, and a great listener. Uh, we've had many conversations um, during lunch, some phone calls, different times of the day and night, and um, has just really helped make sure that if there was a problem, uh, whether it was in the county, whether it was amongst departments, that we always worked it out and we made the county and the fire service better. As president of our Oakland County Firemen's Association, uh, we refer to as Mavis 3201, um, I also want to say thank you very much for everything that he has done um, for us and for the service. And Thanks, buddy. looking forward to some further lunches. Absolutely. I'll take the day off and maybe we can have a cocktail. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Kevin Snell, President of the Oxford Firefighters Union. For the last 15, 16 years, the Chief and I have been very passionately involved uh, in always trying to make the department better. We maybe didn't always see eye to eye with the two positions we had, but when we did uh, work together to make things work, I think we ended up uh, you know, making some really good things happen for the fire department, uh, for the community, and for our response and, and things of that nature. So on behalf of all the firefighters, once again, I'd like to thank you for your loyalty to the fire department for the 46 years. Is Mr. Cole in the audience? <laughs> the one that you gave birth on? <laughs> Anybody else like to give up a uh, few words for Chief Pete? Seeing none, Pete, thank you very much. I'll see you before the end of the year. We've got some things to work out. And thank you for your service. I move to adopt the resolution recognizing Fire Chief Peter Schultz as presented. 
Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Roll call. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. And Trustee Colvin. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we're at two items and then we're going to take a brief recess. Item 9B, Matthew Majestic Employment Agreement. Board members in front of you, uh, we have a, an employment agreement contract in your packet uh, that was worked out with uh, uh, Assistant Chief Matt Majestic and Fire Chief Schultz, myself. Uh, we've gone through this and in front of you tonight, uh, we look forward to a motion uh, to uh, agree to the employment agreement with Assistant Chief. I move to approve the employment agreement between Matthew Majestic and the Charter Township of Oxford. Further, Supervisor Jack Curtis is authorized to sign the agreement on behalf of the Charter Township of Oxford. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Payne. A roll call. Trustee Charles. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Noll. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. And Trustee Colvin. Yes. Okay. Motion carried. Item 9C. We're going to swear in uh, one of our Chief Pete's last uh, official businesses is we're going to have him swear in Assistant Chief Matt Majestic as the new Oxford Township Fire Chief. That's what I said. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Matthew Majestic, do solemnly swear that I will uphold and support the Constitution and bylaws of the Oxford Fire Department. Uphold. Uphold and, and support, support the, Constitution the Constitution and bylaws, bylaws of, the, of the Oxford Fire Department, the constitutions of the state of Michigan, the constitutions of the state of Michigan, and of the United States of America. Of the United States of America, and that I will fulfill the duties as the Oxford Fire Chief, and that I will fulfill the duties of the Oxford Fire Chief and Emergency Manager of the Charter Township of Oxford, and Emergency Manager of the Charter Township of Oxford, to the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. With that, I present you with the Chief's badge. And a little something we picked up here a couple weeks ago. This is the, what's called, referred to as the heavy badge. Perhaps it only weighs two ounces overall. Large ones may run up to four ounces. But when the badge is pinned on, there is a weight unknown to most. The true weight is not overcome by muscle, not found in the gym, not measured on a scale. This weight requires strength and conditioning for which few have trained. The badge is not just pinned on a chest. It is pinned on a lifestyle. The heaviness of the badge makes you different from other professionals. Congratulations, and I leave you with the Oxford Township and its citizens. Good luck. Welcome aboard, Chief. Oxford, Matt. I'll just uh, say thank you and thank Pete uh, for sticking around for this last year and a half to help get me at least uh, get the toes wet anyhow. Definitely the feet aren't all the way there and uh, there's a lot to learn and I've, uh, he knows I'll be calling him and, uh, and I'll be calling Mr. Wright and Mr. Curtis and Mr. Ferrari <laughs> as needed and I appreciate all your support and, and Pete and Wendy Thank you for everything, Pete. Thank you so much for your time and commitment to this community. Uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing that your commitment that you've given this community. Uh, I just thank you all, and again, thank you, Pete. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to call a 10-minute recess so that we can get some photos and get some people back to work in case I get sick uh, and take care of some photo, photo opportunities. So if you will, we'll take 10 minute recess right now.
it. <laughs> uh, we will start with uh, item number seven. Uh, you guys ready? Yes. Okay, item number seven, public hearing. Fiscal year 2023 community development block grant funds. I moved to open a public hearing at 750, excuse me, 655 p.m. to discuss the fiscal year 2023 community development block grant funds. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Clerk Wright. All those in favor signify by saying aye. I can do it. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, is there any member of the public that would like to speak on the 2023 Community Development Block Grant Funds? Same. I move to close the public hearing to discuss fiscal year 2023 Community Development Block Grant Funds at 6.56 p.m. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. Okay, item eight, first reading, mobile food establishment ordinance. Uh, Trustee Noel, did you wanna take that or? Yes, uh, tonight we have in front of us, uh, board members, a mobile food establishment ordinance, which is a new ordinance. We will, we have, we will have two motions in regards to this. Uh, one is I, I move to approve the first reading of the amendments of the Oxford Township Mobile Food Establishment Ordinance and direct the township clerk to publish the said ordinance in accordance with the state law and hereby set the second reading of the ordinance for amendment for the 28th, excuse me, for February 8th, 2023. I'll second that. I have a motion by Trustee Nold and a second by Treasurer Ferrari. Roll call. Trustee Charles? Yes. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Nold? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. And Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Board members, we have a second part of this. It's to, to establish the fees for this uh, new ordinance. I move to approve the resolution to ap approve fee schedule percent to the Oxford Township Mobile Food Establishment Ordinance contingent upon the Oxford Township Mobile Food Establishment Ordinance being approved at the second reading and authorize the township clerk to certify that file. I'll second that. I have a motion by Trustee Nold, a second by Treasurer Ferrari. Are there any questions? Hearing none, uh, roll call. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Nold? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. And Trustee Charles? Yes. Motion carries. First reading, 8B. Grass, Noxious Weeds, and Phragmites Regulation Ordinance. Uh, board members, we were asked by uh, a resident to review and uh, bring back in front of this board the Noxious Weed Ordinance uh, where uh, lawns have to be kept at a certain height during the uh, rebirth of the old ordinance that we voted down in the past, uh, Phragmites regulation was added to this ordinance. So before we get into that with uh, Trustee Nold, I was kind of upset to see Phragmites tied to this noxious weed and grass ordinance. It's two different topics. Phragmites are an invasive species and grass and noxious weeds are a feeling and emotion of some uh, individuals. So with that, uh, John, do you wanna bring that up and talk about it? Yes, we've developed a new ordinance for grass, noxious weed, and Phragnates. It's a new ordinance that we replaced the old ordinance. So I move to approve the first reading of the amendments to the Oxford Township grass, noxious weed, and Phragnates regulation and direct the township clerk to publish the said ordinance in accordance with the state law and hereby set the second reading of said ordinance amended for February 8th, 2023. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Nold, a second by Trustee Payne. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Just, just a few comments on, on this, just from my perspective on it. 
Um, I'm not necessarily against uh, something in place, but the way I read this ordinance, I think it's pretty vague. Uh, there's really not a lot of details in it. Um, we've been going through this for about 20 years, if you go back on the record for this. So, so I'm thinking, uh, from my perspective, I think you need to put more detail in it if, if you're gonna get an ordinance passed. So those are my comments. Okay, Trustee Charles. I have a concern as well about Phragmites. I mean, there's a lot of Phragmites around. I just find that would be difficult to enforce, Phragmites being an invasive species. I also think this might be a uh, solution looking for a problem. I mean, if we've got a few phone calls of a population around 22,000, I'm not sure that's something that uh, needs as much attention as an ordinance. In fact, I would suggest that if we think there's a problem that perhaps uh, we keep track of any possible complaints going forward. So if one person calls, great, but if 15 or 20 people contact us, then there's a serious problem. But until it happens, I'm not sure this needs to go further. Okay, any other comments? I just want to Trustee echo Colvin. Trustee, Trustee Charles comments that we, I guess we don't know how big a problem this is. We know it was one house and one subdivision that had an issue, but um, I'd like to have more data about just how large a problem this is in order to move forward. Any other questions? I have a comment. Um, I, I am totally against this grass noxious weed ordinance. While the Phragmites in the ordinance before a builder can build and uh, promote their property, they would have to remove the Phragmites, that's great. I've had two calls in the last year regarding people's yards not being mowed. When we went and looked at one of the yards, it was a lady whose husband had passed away. She couldn't cut the backyard. So what happened was the neighbor who was building a pool went over and mowed the yard and it took care of that problem. He's got another problem because the neighbor's complaining about the construction stuff in his yard. Then the other complaint was from the subdivision that's trying to get this to go through. I, I don't want to become the person who tells you what your grass should look like. It, it's, it's almost design standards. It's almost what you're gonna have for uh, our ordinance officer going out and measuring your yard and then cutting your yard. And if you don't do it, we're gonna do it and pay to have it done and put it on your, your tax bill. It's just, it's froth with mess so uh that's my opinion uh i look for a motion no i've got a motion so i have a comment before we go to the motion yes sir trustee uh, charles just phragmites would it be possible to have something going forward specific to phragmites with building yes it could separate from this whole issue here yes it can okay thank you okay so the motion is should we proceed to the second reading i'll call the roll please uh, go with Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. No. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Uh, Supervisor Curtis. No. Uh, Trustee Colvin. No. Trustee Charles. No. Clerk Wright. No. So the motion did not carry to move to a second reading. Okay. Item ten. Sharp Engineering Report. Engineer Sharp. Good evening, board members. How are you tonight? Uh, just a couple quick updates for you, um, and obviously I'll field any questions. Uh, we'll start with a couple of road commission items. Uh, first off, the Maloney Bridge has been completed. It is back open to, uh, to traffic. They've pulled a lot of the soil erosion measures out of the way. They do have some cleanup left to do down in that area. So don't know how many calls the uh, office fielded on that, but uh, that project is pretty well complete regarded, uh, with with the uh, some restoration to be completed. Secondly, uh, the Road Commission was out doing some, we'll call it ditching, along West Drainer Road recently. Um, the road is scheduled to be overlaid next year. I think it might be in preparation of that, but the drainage is really poor. The water doesn't leave the roadway itself and drain into the ditches. So they have been out there uh, cleaning some of that up uh, as well. Um, regarding some of the, the fire station number three, uh, the phase one project has been completed. All of the land balancing, tree clearing, 
Um, that was the installation of the parking lot that was completed. Um, we are working on phase two right now, getting all of our permits in order for MDOT to do a crossover. We'll be doing that in the springtime. And the, uh, the well itself, we're gonna be putting that out for bids probably in January. So expect something from us on, uh, uh, in February for the Township Board to, uh, to vote on to move forward with the installation of the well. Uh, we're working with DTE, if anybody's done that, that's a real joy. Um, but we're going to get a transformer down there and get a pole relocated for the future expansion. And um, I guess I'll just take a second to also uh, thank Chief Pete for all the, the work. And, you know, we've had a, a great relationship together, and I look forward to uh, working with Chief Matt now as well. So um, there we go. Uh, the north, the sanitary sewer project, the north area, we call it, San SAD project, that is moving forward. Um, the design has been completed. We're in for permits right now. We are in the process of obtaining easements from the necessary parties with regards to that. And everything's kind of still on schedule for next year for construction uh, to happen. And other than that, just wishing everybody a happy holiday. Uh, Merry Christmas. And I'll feel any questions that you may have. Uh, Jim, I'm going to ask a question. It was brought to my attention today that we could have a verbal or a written update on engineering projects. We love to see you here. We love to see you talk to us. If we have any questions, we can do that. Sure. We know you're in the office every day, most generally, but if this board were to get a written copy, if you're not gonna be here, I can read them. You can prep me on some of the answers, but we appreciate these updates. And uh, if, if we, the board wants to, we might, and interject you to just say send us a report and we'll read it we can we can do it that way if you'd like this wasn't even an agenda item i, I don't know what prompted it a year or uh, two ago i think we had a lot of water sewer items or something going ago. on so yeah whatever your pro pleasure is I'm, I'm okay with that yeah but you're here for something else tonight so thank you oh i just i'm just a concerned citizen <laughs> i have a question um, <laughs> yes on behalf of trustee nold and myself the height of the uh, bridge on Maloney Street, mm -hmm. is that about the same or more or less than uh, previous? I haven't measured it, but the underside of the bridge is supposed to be exactly the same as it was before, minus the beam that went through there. So the beam took away about 8 inches or 10 inches or so, right. but the actual underside of the decking, um, according to the road commission plans, is supposed to be exactly the same as where it was before. We'll find out in the springtime, by our we'll summer, I know it, that. Yes. Hope it's not a wet spring. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Engineer Sharp? Seeing none. Thank, thank you, you, Jim. All right, here we go. Item 11, unfinished business. Community block, community development block grant suggested funding for 2023. Uh, Treasurer Ferrari uh, gets uh, the amount of money and what it can be spent on and does a valiant effort in moving it from some that got some last year to some that should get some next year. Uh, next year, we're gonna have a little, uh, here's what we can do with it, and you'll all have some input to it. Joe's done a lot of work on tracking who did get some last year and who is eligible for some this year. So I'll let Treasurer Ferrari uh, explain what he is gonna recommend. Uh, board members, for this year, we're looking at continuing the mobile home minor home repair program as that's still a pretty big need in both our home communities. Also with the Meals on Wheels program to help fund them for nutrition assistance and for Haven's domestic violence prevention programs. Uh, this year, the funding's coming a little bit less. We're hoping it'll be increasing in years to come, but there's no guarantee. I make a motion of the Charter Township of Oxford Board of Trustees formally agrees to allocate its 2023 community development block grant funds in the following manner, 20,655, the continuation of the mobile home mine home repair program for Oakland County Community Development, 6,352 to provide funding for wages for nutrition, nutrition assistance for Oxford's Meals on Wheels program run through the Older Persons Commission, OPC in Rochester, $2,500 to provide funding for Haven's domestic violence prevention programs and services. In the case of CDBG funding comes in less than anticipated, the allocation for mobile home mine home repair program line item is to be reduced appropriately. 
Uh, the Chartered Township of Oxford Board of Trustees also authorizes CDBG Coordinator Joseph G. Ferrari to prepare all the necessary documents, and authorize Supervisor Jack L. Curtis to sign the 2023 annual CDBG submittal, 2023 subrecipient agreement, one made available, and the conflict of interest certification on behalf of the township. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Noel. Any questions? Yes, sir, Trustee Charles. Mr. Ferrari, how is this communicated to people that need repairs at a mobile home? Uh, right, it used to be done through Olshio, but the county's now going to contract through Habitat through Humanity, and they try to send out flyers to those folks and let them know. I'm working on something as well once that's all finalized to let those folks in those communities know that there's funding available. The tough thing about it is already a waiting list. So it's kind of like you want to kind of get through that waiting list before I tell the folks, hey, money's available and there's 10 people ahead of you. They can come in on a waiting list and ask for funds when we allocate them. But I also get funds for, or questions from people who may have a, a need for financial assistance. Then I would steer them to Oakland County for homes and now to for the mobile homes. Haven gets a check and they do what they can with it. Same with the OPC for Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, roll call. Trustee Noll. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Item 11B, American Rescue Plan Act Committee update. Uh, board members, tonight we're going to have the committee give us an update on what they've spent, what is being proposed to be spent, and the items list that they've captured from our input. So uh, is that you, Clerk Wright? It is. Yes, it is. Unless uh, Trustee Charles or Trustee Dold or Trustee Payne wants to take the lead. All you. All right. All right. So, <laughs> so with, that, with that, the committee has been meeting regularly, probably once a month on average here. And what, what we've done is, uh, give you an update on where the money has been allocated, what money's been spent to date, and what we have remaining in the, in the projects that have, been, have, that have been approved. And as you can see, just running down the list real quick, is this, the Camp Oakland Sanitary Sewer Pump Station, M24 Sewer Line, which is known as the North Area Sanitary Sewer, SAD, the fire radios, and leftover funding for proposed Fire Station 3, cemetery maintenance improvements, Railroad Safety Path, Proposed Fire Station Number Three, Legal Fees, Pollyann Trail, and Farmers Market. The last two items we have uh, paid those monies out, so they're totally been expended out of the ARPA, ARPA funding to this date. Um, what we have is we've received two million thirty-one thousand three hundred sixty-four dollars and ninety-four cents. Of that, we currently have nine hundred twenty-three thousand three hundred sixty-four dollars and ninety-four cents at the time of printing of this document. Um, now moving forward, the purpose of the, the agenda item is to get the board's input if you want any more projects uh, that are not listed on this sheet that, that you want the committee to discuss. If I counted right, there are 17 items right now that the committee is considering uh, recommending funding for for the township, so I won't uh, read through all of them, but you've seen them in your packet, so if there's something more you don't see, let us know if not here tonight. Uh, you're welcome to email me, call me, stop in the office. So uh, I'll throw it back to you, Supervisor Curtis, and uh, leave it at that. Thank you for the update. Any additional items that need to be considered for American Rescue Plan should be given to Clerk Wright, Trustee Payne, and Trustee Nold. All right. M I Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, we had an opportunity to f a final site plan for McLaren, uh, their new facility on 24. And one of the things we've been kicking around is EV charging stations. So at that meeting, I suggested that they add that to their final site plan. They were very receptive to that. So some of the, these things were working behind the scenes to preserve that funding and move forward with uh, the programs as well. Thank you. Yes, sir, Trustee Charles. So I know in the past uh, we sought legal opinion on, regarding uh, money for other entities such as parks and recreation. Is that the standard procedure going forward? Is it specific to each organization? Now, what we have is uh, it's you're, alloc you're allowed to allocate funds for legal counsel 
to ensure that you're doing the right thing, the legal thing, uh, all of the requirements of ARPA funding have to be followed. And we have our attorneys here tonight, Brittany Ellis, and uh, she sits in on the meetings to make sure that the committee is following all those guidelines. I guess my question would be, is that specific to every time we make uh, an allocation or is that all decisions well, I see are, a, a nodding of the head down there, but yeah, all decisions are run by the attorney to ensure our okay. compliance with what was allowed to spend. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Moving on. Here you go, John. Item 11 C single trash hauler for Oxford township. Good evening board. We're, we're we've worked very hard. The committee of, uh, Mr. Wright, myself and, Margie Payne, to work forward with present a single trash hauler request for proposal. We have our consultant in the here that I'd like to introduce you to and have him come up to the, the microphone and possibly answer any questions, uh, Jim Fry from Services for Resource Cycling. We're here tonight to do two things, possibly to approve the RFP to go out on the first motion, and the second motion will be approving hiring the consulting firm to continue the work with us. Mr. Fry. Sure, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, um, and I'm available for questions. Uh, the committee has uh, done a lot of uh, background research, and uh, we feel like we've addressed every one of the details that are part of an RFP like this. The process is sort of a well-oiled process throughout the you know, multi-county Southeast Michigan area. Most of the haulers have seen this kind of RFP, and um, they're always eager. Uh, to participate and uh, we anticipate a process that would begin if you should so decide to move forward uh, early in January and possibly result in activation uh, during the third quarter of 2023. Um, I think you've all had the document and we're available for questions uh, and I will I'll leave it at that for right now if that's sufficient. Okay. Board members, if you have any questions, address them and Mr. <clears throat> Fry. We'll answer them. Yes. Let's start with Treasurer Ferrari. Mr. Fry, I know back in the day when this was discussed in 89, 90, the issue was you're going to put the little guys out of business. In the year 2022, aren't there not too many little guys left anymore? There are not too many little guys. It's, it's actually a game of big programs, big, uh, both national, multinational, as well as emerging uh, strong companies. Uh, so all of them, uh, even the, for lack of a better word, the smallest and the newest, they're anxious for, for this type of um, competitive proposal. Uh, so that's been our experience, not only here, but in a number of nearby townships that have some similar issues. Uh, also some of the challenges of the environment that we have now, uh, fuel cost in increases, uh, labor costs, labor availability, equipment costs. It really has become a more serious game that requires a higher capitalized uh, companies essentially so yep okay uh trustee charles when i reviewed it i didn't see it. maybe i missed it it was i'm not sure who gets billed does to the carrier or the township the way it is set up right now it is set up so the hauler that you contract with would send a single invoice to you the township and then you the township through an ordinance would take steps to be able to collect that as a um, a unit fee uh, or similar. Um, and one of the things that we know from other uh, local units that we work through this with is that will give you actually a lower cost per month for your residents. So maybe Mr. Ferkin, so where would this be billed? Our taxes every year, twice a year then? Is that, is that what, I didn't, I didn't see it in there. That's why I'm asking okay. the question. Um, let Jim answer that. Yeah, what, how that is structured typically uh, one of two ways, um, and usually uh, the most common way is it's a per unit cost, and the quote from the hauler helps sort of foundation of that. And then uh, most will do it on a single, do it on one of your two um, uh, tax levies, just as an additional item fee uh, under that type of structure. So it still would uh, operate under your typical lien uh, recovery uh, operations, but one of the things that that enables that approach is it's really literally just applied to the unit that receives the service. 
As a charter township, you are also uh, enabled through uh, state law to be able to uh, authorize a millage, um, which has its own implications, you know, spread out over the whole property tax base, et cetera. So, yeah. Um, Clerk Wright. Yeah, um, uh, just uh, Mr. Fries and Mr. Mendelin getting us to this point, so hopefully task three will be approved momentarily. But um, uh, I was wondering if maybe if you could maybe walk the board through what will happen between now and implementation. Yeah, we, uh, in the in the draft, you'll see a schedule, and so right now we've got you this far, and once you actually publish it for our work scope, that's a new set of services. One of the first things that we would work on is helping with that publishing. We'll make sure that all the haulers in the region get contacted, that they know about the mandatory pre-proposal meeting, uh, that they've got the documents, simple stuff like that. We help facilitate the pre-proposal meeting and you know, the, the usual dialogue that comes with a wide variety of questions, some of which are sort of about, about you and your township, and some of which are about the kinds of things that we would know the answers to. There's then a series of potential addendums, you know, additional answers to those questions in writing uh, that are sent to all the proposers. Uh, there may be other questions that come in. They then uh, submit their proposals and the work we would support would walk through a evaluation with your evaluation committee. Uh, we would provide some decision criteria to help with that, scoring that sort of thing. But also most importantly, through a request for proposals process, is you have the ability to ask for further clarifying questions. Uh, there's actually a sequence where you open the technical proposals first without looking at the cost proposals. You make sure those proposals are responsive, that are fully delivering the services that you want, and then you open the cost proposals. And at that point, you may have questions. What does this statement that you made on page six of your you know, proposal mean relative to the cost? Those clarifying questions become part of a formal process of them submitting written responses, which then become by default part of their legal you know, pool of uh, proposed services. During that process, likely you'll interview at least one, maybe two, maybe all of them. That interview might then um, fo be followed by a final clarifying question, what we call the best and final offer phase, so that if anything is uncertain about cost or some aspect of the program, it's again in writing, and at that point, that committee will be making a decision on what to recommend to you, and we will help with that and also prepare a recommendation technical memo uh, that would be delivered to you, so. Okay, I wanna ask a question, maybe it'll solve several. You said it's a two-part RFP. The first one, first one goes out to determine the scope of work, uh, they both go out at the same time, but their responses are packaged in two envelopes. Okay, yeah. so now I get my scope of work. Yeah. Uh, we're going to pick your garbage up on Wednesday. Right. We're going to give you a can. We're going to buy you out of your contract with community. We're going to do all these things. So all the questions would be answered if we move forward with this RFP. Yeah. Secondly, before you held a public hearing or notice, you would want to know what the fee is Correct. so that I could ask somebody in the audience, hey, how much is it gonna cost me a month or a quarter? So I'll have those answers. You, you will, and we know from other communities going through this process that, and we, we gave some of this information to you folks earlier, that you know, generally speaking for, you'll get the highest level of service, typically at anywhere from 25% to 67% what you're currently paying. I kind of call it the anti-inflation program for your home. It's some real money that you would save. We've estimated to be over a million dollars for your residents per year. Wow. It's very real. Did I see some a hand up down here? Any questions? Okay, Trustee Charles, you had another one? Well, that was the question I hear sometimes when this comes up is, is this going to be cheaper than what I'm doing now? Yeah. The other question I get sometimes is should we have, and I don't get into minutiae too much, more than one company for the people that complain that, oh, you've got a monopoly. I mean. I'm okay with it personally, but I do hear that question on occasion. We'll once have two companies, whatever, but I'd love that you go forward on that. The, the, the two things that, I mean, those are typical concerns that come up. And one is your, you know, your 22,000 residents and households are a small part of a marketplace that has, you know, six other haulers. 
Um, so if any, even if your hauler were to default on the contract, within a week you'd have a, a backup hauler in place. Oh, okay. What also happens is that all the usual <clears throat> complaints and things that residents come to you about, you know, hey, my hauler, blah, 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 that level of complaint just drops way down to next to nothing. Satisfaction is typically very high, and I like to tell people in your position that, that count how many complaints you get on this issue, you know, on an annual basis now, and then you'll be comparing that to two or three years from now, and it'll, how many praises and thank yous you get. Because that's really the story for your peers. Go ask from the other um, other communities. It becomes a plus instead of a, just an issue that you have to manage. So, so generally people generally people become more satisfied with this simpler, higher quality system that's lower cost. Okay. This meeting is recorded, so we can hold him accountable too. So. <laughs> well, make my chain. Yeah. I know there's Cheaper been a lot of work. Is what I'm hearing. I know there's been a lot of work gone into this. Our next step is to, John? It's two phases. First, we have to approve the RFP process to go further with the RFP. And the second, we have to approve uh, funding of services for uh, Mr. Fry's company. Okay, so let me ask a question. Who writes the RFP? The RFP today is written. It needs to be finalized before it goes out. But we have written it. Brittany, our, our legal counsel, has been through it. And she's given her 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 uh, review of it, and we've incorporated that in the RFP. The way the motion is read tonight, you'll be part of that final release process to work with the the committee, the attorney, uh, Mr. Fry, and yourself to to finalize putting that out to the general public to the okay. on the mitten program. We aren't tied to anything once we do our RFP. We're just Correct. learning. Okay. Yes. Second is. Uh, the public hearings to announce what we're doing okay so i look for a motion no more questions i move to authorize the township supervisor in consultation with the board waste hauling subcommittee resource recycling services and the township attorney to issue a request for proposals for the selection of a qualified contractor to be sole provider of solid waste recycling and yard waste collection transportation processing and disposal services within the township second i have a motion by trustee nold and a second by trustee Payne. are there any questions hearing none roll call trustee colvin yes trustee Payne. yes trustee nold yes treasurer ferrari yes uh, clerk wright yes uh trustee charles yes and supervisor curtis yes thank you very much and then i'd like to make a second motion if yes. i may Yes. I move to approve the continuation of services from resource recycling services through the phase three as set forth in the RFP for solid waste recycling and yard waste collection, transportation, processing, and disposal services in the township in an amount not to exceed $4,500 to be expensed to account 101-267-8612. Contract services. I'll second that. I have a motion by Trustee Nold, a second by Treasurer Ferrari. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Clerk Wright, yes. Trustee Nold, yes. Trustee Payne, yes. Supervisor Curtis, yes. Treasurer Ferrari, yes. Trustee Colvin, yes. And Trustee Charles, yes. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Board. Fry. Very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Okay. Ah, the fun stuff. 11D, uh, 2022 General Fund Budget 101 Amendments. Uh, I will pull that up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Two, That's been changed. We have those couple of clericals. Uh, I don't have a copy of the change, so you're going to have to read those for me, Joe. Okay. Basically, guys, you got it in your email. Basically, change on the revenue side. We changed uh, 538. 003 to put some money there, 573000, to reallocate that back. Those are the only changes on general fund. Okay. I move to approve the recommended 2022 budget amendments for general fund 101 with revenues and expenditures balance at $3,759,303 that 
attach the spreadsheet as appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by trust Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Nold? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. And Trustee Charles? Yes. 11E, yes. 2022 Road Fund Budget 204 Amendments. I move to approve the recommended 2022 budget amendments for the Road Fund 204 with revenues and expenditures balancing 136,168. Cats a spreadsheet as appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. And Trustee Colvin. Yes. Item 11F, 2022, Fire Fund Budget 206 Amendments. Uh, board members, we work with uh, Finance Manager Young. Did some changes for the projected revenues and expenditures. Get everything more in line. It looks really good. We just did some uh, quick changes. You saw that in an email attachment this afternoon. Basically, we took her amendments and uh, made sure everything balanced back. With that, I move to approve the recommended 2022 budget amendments for the Fire Fund 206 with the revenues and expenditures balanced at $6,332,577.79 Attached to spreadsheet as appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Nold. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. And Trustee Payne. Yes. Item G, 2022, Police Contracting Fund. 207 amendments. Uh, board members, we just took a couple little quick changes on this, just in anticipation of having some more sheriff's bills. Uh, we just uh, did a quick amendment on the contract for Oakland County, just in case it comes a little bit higher. I move to approve the recommended 2022 budget amendments for police contracting fund 207 with revenues and expenditures balancing at 4 million, 228, 385, attached to spreadsheets appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Yes. Mr. Ferrari, what makes you think it might come in higher? Well, Pardon? I'll answer that. Answer. Uh, what happened was the county fell behind in their billing for 2022. Just recently, uh, Danielle and I sat down and did the May billing for the expense for the Sheriff's Department. As soon as we authorized it and went to stick it in for payment, they amended the May billing. We are going through June, July, August, September, and October uh, coming up this oh, tomorrow. So we'll have the rest of these caught up until November. Now what that means is we're going to have November and December <clears throat> billed out to us in, in January or February of 2023. And I know last year uh, Susan McCulloch kind of just told me I needed to fix that. But it, it's, it's awful hard fixing something you don't own, drive, or put gas in. So we... It would be like a football play where once the play is over, there's no do-overs, right? No, no. They're, these are not do-overs. These are... I, I can explain this. We've had a tumultuous uh, December, January, February, and March. We're catching up with a lot of it now. The county changing their billing cycles and their uh, software has caused a great problem and this is our largest account that's charged back uh, to the county so if there are no Thank more you. further questions roll call treasurer ferrari yes supervisor curtis yes clerk wright yes trustee charles yes trustee colvin yes trustee payne yes and trustee Nold. yes uh, item 11H, 2022 Cemetery Maintenance Fund Budget, I two, go. 209 amendments. I move to approve the recommended 2022 budget amendments for Cemetery Maintenance Fund 209 with revenues and expenditures balanced at $92,502. Attach a spreadsheet appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? 
Seeing none, roll call. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Noel. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Uh, that was cemetery. Okay, here we go. Uh, 11 I. Uh, 2022 telecommunications fund budget 239 amendments. I was going fast to beat you. <laughs> I move to approve the recommended 2022 budget amendments for the telecommunications fund 239 with the revenues and expenditures balancing at 43,031. Catch a spreadsheet of appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Clerk Wright, yes. Trustee Charles? Yes. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Noll? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. 11J, 2022 Building Fund Permit, Building Permit Fund Budget, 249 amendments. I move to approve the recommended 2022 budget amendments for Building Permit Fund 249 with revenues and expenditures balancing at $486,700. Catch a spreadsheet of appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Noll. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Charles? Yes. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Noll? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. Uh, item 11K, 2022 Safety Path Fund 297 Amendments. I move to approve the recommended 2022 budget amendments for the safety path fund 297 with revenues and expenditures balancing at $57,362. Attach a spreadsheet to the appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Nold? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. And Trustee Charles? Yes. Right. That's it for that one. Okay, uh, item 12A, new business, sharp engineering fees. Uh, board members in your packet was a member for a professional service uh, rate request from our township engineer, Jim Sharp. Uh, as noted, Sharp Engineering has, a not, has not raised their rates in several years, whether it's the retainers or the fees for principals, project managers, and such. In the, in the package was the proposed new rate for these services beginning January 1st, 2023. I move to approve the Sharp Engineering hourly fee increases. For engineering services as listed on the proposed schedule of fees for engineering services to be effective January 1, 2023. The December 5, 2022 Sharp Engineering Letter and the proposed schedule of fees for engineering services to be included as an attachment, December 14, 2022 meeting minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Do we get a discount if he gets to stay home? <laughs> I'll work that into his retainer. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Charles. Uh, roll call. Uh, Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Noll. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. And Trustee Colvin. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Can I borrow some money? <laughs> <laughs> Item 12B, 2023 North Oakland Transportation Authority Budget Amendments. Uh, board members. Uh, with the uh, passing of our 0.23 millage uh, for NOTA, uh, which now has been circumvented by the Oakland County Transit Authority, 0.95 mills. The budget has to be amended to show that. I move to approve the revised 2023 North Oakland Transportation Authority budget with revenues and expenditures balanced at 3,009093 and attached to spreadsheets of appendix to the minutes. This revised budget replaced a previously approved budget that was adopted in the August 24th, 2022 Board of Trustees meeting. Second. Second. Uh, I heard Margie. That's fine. Motion by <laughs> Treasurer Ferrari, second by Trustee Payne. Uh, are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Payne? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Nold? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. And Trustee Charles? Yes. 
12C 2023 Oxford Area Cable Communications Commission budget amendment. Uh, board members, uh, the uh, OCTV budget was amended and presented to us for our approval. In the package is the budget. Should you have any questions? I move to, pre to approve the revised 2023 cable TV fund budget with revenues and expenditures balancing at $525,353. Attach a spreadsheet as appendix to the minutes. This revised budget will replace the previously approved budget that was adopted at the August 24, 2022 Board of Trustees meeting. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Clerk Wright. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Motion carries. Item 12D, authorized 2023 wage resolution. Uh, board members, uh, back in August 24th, 2022, we approved uh, for the first time in our budget wage increases for 2023. At that time, it was approved. Secondly, uh, committee member Colvin and supervisor, trustee Colvin and Supervisor Curtis uh, reworked our uh, uh, evaluation forms, changing them to a pay for performance based on uh, your job function and how you did on it to a nine box score. We then applied a, uh, uh, the funds that were budgeted to each department for wage increases uh, for 2023. And in your package, is a budget or is a uh, section eight, which gives the township trustees uh, all the way down to the treasurer or to the uh, part-time ordinance officer. In black was what it currently is, in red what the proposed and recommended amounts went to uh, based on the budget approval, based on the performance evaluation. I move to approve the 2023 Authorized salary, salary, hourly, and per diem rates resolution as presented. Second. I have a motion by trustee or by treasurer Ferrari and a second by trustee Colvin. Any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. No. Trustee Noel. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Work right, yes. Uh, Trustee Charles? Yes. And Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Okay, item 11 or 12E, 2023 General Appropriations Act. Uh, board members in your packet was the 2023 General Appropriations Act that we have, have to turn into the state. I think so as part of your audit. It's part of the audit. I believe so. Where our expenditures are coming from, how much those expenditures are, and that list is section one through section seven. I move to approve the Charter Township of Oxford 2023 General Appropriations Act as presented. Second. I have a motion by Trustee or Treasurer Ferrari, the second by Trustee Colvin. Are there any questions? Seeing none. Roll call. Trustee Charles. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Noel. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. And Trustee Colvin. Yes. Okay, item 12F. Uh, Interlocal agreement for Oakland County designated assessor. Oxford Township utilizes the service of the Oakland County Assessing Board. Uh, what they need is a resolution from us stating that the uh, uh, assessing duties uh, is, is performed by Oakland County and we approve it. Oh, Curtis, get that motion up there for me. Yeah, a little bit higher, Curtis. There we oh, go. Too high. I move to approve the interlocal agreement for Oakland County to approve the designated assessor for the period of January 1, 2023, to December 31st, 2027, as presented. I authorize Supervisor Jack Curtis to sign the interlocal agreement on behalf of the Charter Township of Oxford. Second. I have a motion by 
Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Clerk Wright. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Trustee Noel? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Charles? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. Item 12G, resolution for sewer connection fee increase. Uh, board members, we had a study done by uh, Paul Stoddard uh, to find out if we were charging enough for our sewer tap fees, they're called, to connect to the Oakland County sewer. Uh, we had this in front of us before uh, where we were going to raise the rates January 1st to $6,000 and allow us to contact and work with uh, our developers in the community and respect agreements we have with them at $5,000 a piece. What we're doing now is changing the January 1st to February 1st. In my absence, uh, we failed to contact these uh, developers and we were working on a uh, sewer project on Drainer Road and our developer, we did not complete it in time like the letter stated, so we have to redo the letter, collect the fees up front. So we're asking for 30 days to February 1st to allow that $5,000 connection fee to those developers. I move to approve the resolution in regard to Article 3 of Chapter 62, Sewers and Sewage Disposal of the Charter, Oxford Charter Township Code of Ordinances, amending the base connection charge of $6,000. Further, any other proposed development within the Sanitary Sewer District the desires to prepaid sanitary sewer connection fees prior to February 1st, 2023 is permitted to do so at the current rate of $5,000 connection fee rate. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. And Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Okay, these two I just need. Um, okay. 12H, planning commission appointments. Uh, board members, uh, we have two planning commission members whose terms are up December 31st. Correct. Okay, one is Ed Hunwick and one is Michael Spiz. I'm recommending that we reappoint them. They've both agreed to take the job. Supervisor, can you please make that motion so we know it's your consent? Me? Yes. Sure. <laughs> I move to reappoint Ed Hunwick and Mike, Michael Spiz to the Charter Township of Oxford Planning Commission for a three-year term commencing January 1st, 2023 and expiring December 31st, 2025. Second. A motion by Supervisor Curtis, a second by Treasurer Ferrari. All those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none, motion carries. Board of Review uh, appointments. Uh, board members, I'm just going to read the motion because what happens is their terms are up and we're reappointing them. I move to reappoint Jan Drogash, <clears throat> James McGinnis, Marjorie McGinnis, to the Charter Township of Oxford Board of Review for a two-year term commencing January 1st, 2023 and expiring December 31st, 2025, or 2024. And to reappoint Sean Marshall and Claire McVetty as alternates to the Charter Township of Oxford Board of Review for a two-year term commencing January 1st, 2023 and expiring December 31st, 2024. I will second that. Okay, you have a motion by Supervisor Curtis, a second by Treasurer Ferrari. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. Item 12J. No has. Treasurer Ferrari. Uh, board members, this is pretty much standard that we adopt every year. So I'm going to continue with the three motions. I move to accept the 2023 North Oakland County Household Hazardous Waste Interlocal Agreement 
between Oakland County and the Charter Township Vox for as presented. Authorized Supervisor Jack Curtis to sign the agreement. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions on the motion? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. I move that the Charter Township of Oxford shall notify Oakland County that it will not charge a 10 to $15 participation fee per resident, that the cost for the participation shall be paid by the Charter Township of Oxford. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold, and I have a question. Sure. What account does this come out of? God, I have to look at our general fund. That's okay. You know that it comes out of yeah. general fund. So Danielle will let me know later which one it is. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Okay, questions? Yes, Trustee just Charles. Like I just want to, so this was around 560 some odd dollars is what I'm hearing you say from previously? Oh, uh, more than that. Was it more than that? I missed something then. It's 10 to $15 per, per participant. Car. That if we were to charge them, but we don't. We okay. pay that. Okay. We pay that. All right. Yeah. Any other questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Noll? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. Trustee Colvin? Yes. And Trustee Charles? Yes. I move to approve the North Oakland Household Hazardous Waste Consortium Resolution as presented. Hereby appoint Treasurer Joseph G. Ferrari as official representative for the Charter Township of Oxford, the No Has Advisory Board for 2023. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. Motion carries. 12K, MDOT performance resolution for mun municipalities. Board members annually, uh, the townships have to sign a performance resolution. Move up a little bit, thank you, uh, for work and uh, duties performed in the MDOT right-of-ways. I move to approve the Michigan Department, of Nat the Michigan Department of Transportation Performance Resolution for municipalities as presented. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. All those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. 12L. Generator purchase for Dunlap Road Water Treatment Plant, Water and Sewer Committee. Uh, board members, in your packet, you'll find that the generator for uh, the uh, Dunlap Road Water Treatment Plant has failed. The generator is old and antiquated. They've tried to tear it down and repair it. Parts are obsolete, uh, rendering us at the mercy of having to buy a new generator uh, with this motion. That's $440,000 for the purchase of this generator. I move to approve $440,000 for the purchase of a new generator for the Dunlap Road Water Treatment Plant. This $440,000 amount to be expensed to the water fund, account number 591-538-972.006, water treatment facility. Second. I have a motion by uh, Treasurer Ferrari, uh, second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Trustee Nold? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Charles? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Okay, item M, uh, the township uh, needs to purchase new vessel control panels to run the four vessels at our Dunlap water, road water treatment plant. Uh, the estimated cost for these panels is $140,000. I move to approve $140,000 for the purchase of new vessel control panels for the Dunlap Road water treatment plant and the Oxford Woods water treatment plant. This $140,000 amount to be expensed to the water fund, account number 591-538-972.006, water treatment facility. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin? Yes. 
Trustee Payne. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Oh, I can stop now. Twelve <laughs> N. A job. Twenty twenty three Oakland County Moth Suppression Grant Program Resolution. Trustee Charles. Board members, Oakland County has approved the uh, Moth Suppression Grant Program for twenty twenty three to assist in the cost for the suppression of the spongy moth, formerly known as gypsy moths. And I would say if uh, Commissioner Spiz was here that I uh, appreciate his help in setting up this grant program. Uh, we participated last year, as you recall, and to participate in this program, uh, we need to have a board resolution that must be approved. Attached for our review is the 2023 application guide for Oakland County Invasive Spongy Moth Suppression Grant Program. So the following motion is offered for consideration. I move to approve the resolution of compliance with the 2023 Oakland County Moss Suppression Grant Program as presented. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Charles, a second by Clerk Wright. Are there any questions? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Uh, anyone who opposes, nays. Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, item 12O, Spongy Moth Field Survey. Trustee Charles. Board members, in 2021, the uh, township contracted with the service of Linda Stout and Catherine Sola to perform a survey of the areas of Oxford Township to determine the spongy moth infestation. Uh, the spongy moth committee is requesting the township board to consider contracting with Linda Stout to perform a field survey to determine whether any areas of Oxford Township need to be sprayed for spongy moth infestation for 2023. Uh, attaches Linda's background, experience, and a memorandum of, of understanding. Uh, a little bit of background on this, by the way, we had two people previously. Catherine Sola will not be doing it this year. However, we will have two people. The other person is an employee of Michigan State University Extension Program, and that person's compensation will pick, be picked up by MSU. So we'll have two people, but we only be, we'll be paying for one person. So I move to contract the service of Linda Stout to perform a field survey of Oxford Township to determine any areas to be considered for spraying as part of the fiscal year 2023 Oakland County Moth Suppression Grant Program and authorize Supervisor Jack Curtis to sign the Memorandum of Understanding on behalf of the Charter Township of Oxford. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Charles, a second by Clerk Wright. I have one comment. It was so nice this year hearing three or four phone calls about low-flying aircraft than 400 phone calls regarding the dying oak trees. I know we had a field survey team. Uh, Rod thought he lost his wedding ring in my yard, but all the areas were covered, and I'm telling you what, that spraying worked. And through the grants from Oakland County and the uh, MSU people, uh, it was very fiscally responsibly done, and I think it worked wonderfully. Um, we're going to spend money here, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, roll call. Trustee Charles? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Trustee Knoll? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. And Trustee Coleman? Yes. 12P, November 8th, 2022, General Election Certification. Board members, the November 8th election has been completed. There is a, uh, there was just recently a recount in Oakland County causing the state canvas to be delayed to certify the election results. But uh, in your packet is the, is the canvas of votes for uh, November 8th election for Oxford Township issues, which was Trustee Colvin's re-election to the Township Board. And that's the only thing that's in the packet that affected Oxford that was allowed to release this information for, for the public of the canvas. So with that, I'll move to approve the canvas of votes for the November 8, 2022 primary election for the Charter Township of Oxford as presented and to include them as an attachment to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Clerk Wright, a second by Trustee Nold for this real close <laughs> dead heat uh, election process for Catherine Colvin this year. Yes, sir, Trustee Charles. Mr. Wright, have you heard anything about when the recount process will be completed and the rest of the results can be official? Not, not officially. Uh, from my understanding, the Oakland County portion 
included, I think, four large municipalities, Troy, Rochester Hills, Farmington Hills, and Pontiac. And they conducted that on uh, December 7th. As far as I know, it's been completed. I think they used about 100 workers looking for volunteers because of the urgency to get the information completed. But I have not heard anything to release us for, for informational purposes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Catherine, you don't want to question this? <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Uh, do we need a roll call? You do not. Oh, we we do not. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. Uh, 2023 Oxford Township Board of Trustees regular meeting calendar. Uh, board members, I hope you all looked at it. I hope it's not interfering with anything from deer hunting, what it used to take over, and we don't have to worry about PD's gone. Uh, where else is his birthday? It's not this year. Okay. I move to approve the Charter Township of Box for Board of Trustees. 2023 regular meeting schedule as presented. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Clerk Wright. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. Item 13, items removed from consent agenda for action or discussion. We had none. Item 14, public comment. Anybody in the public want to comment? Oh, you got to say something. <laughs> As this is my last official meeting with the Township Board, I want to thank each and every one of the board members for your support, uh, understanding, uh, being there for questions back and forth, for me asking lots and lots of questions that I didn't understand things or for education purposes. Um, it's been a great career. I've enjoyed every bit of it. Um, I've enjoyed serving the Oxford community. It's a community that I grew up in. It's my hometown. Um, it meant a lot to be able to be part of it. Um, it was extremely beneficial being able to be part of the process, working with the planning commission from the village and from the township on all the different meetings and the projects that have come forward and seeing them come from, you know, from the planning stage all the way to fruition to see the, the new companies that we have in town and businesses, everything. Um, the fire department, I believe, is in good hands moving forward. And I think the staff that we have on hand right now and the equipment that we have on right now puts us at one of the top departments in the county and even in the state and with that i you know turn it over to matt and wish everybody good will and happy holidays i was looking for volunteer firefighters <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that'll happen thank you very much okay board of trustees comments let's start on my left this time with trustee charles okay first of all pete congratulations we talked about the other day at a uh, separate committee meeting for another entity we're involved with, the uh, Downtown Development Authority. Uh, and I'm hoping that Pete stays on with the DDA. Y you are a great resource for the DDA. And uh, it's also good to talk about the Lions going forward every time we get a chance to, right? Appreciate that. Um, in fact, speaking of, I see Trustee Colvin down here and Pete, our wonderful Christmas party we had this past weekend party animals surround us. Uh, a quick comment about the Oxford Addison Youth Group that I'm involved with. Uh, there's a budget in there. It's partially completed because the group had a little bit of challenging during COVID, uh, COVID, sorry, COVID to uh, meet, especially with their, uh, uh, their students. But uh, it's been taken care of. We have an employee now that keeps track of these kind of things. But I did want to put in the packet so we get an idea of what that organization is doing. That's Thank it. you. Uh, Clerk Wright? Yeah, a few things. Uh, Pete, you know, we can't uh, thank you enough for what you've done for the community and wish you and Wendy well, whatever your endeavors are. So congratulations to you, and uh, hopefully it works out well for your remaining years for that. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, also just like to recognize uh, Supervisor Curtis and Chief Schultz on an article in the MTA Magazine. If you haven't read it, please do so. Um, it's not an article necessarily that was uh, what you wanted to report on, but it was something that I, I think uh, can resonate with a lot of other communities in, in Michigan and around, around the country on that. So just want to get some recognition there on that. Um, another, another item I want to um, go through is our committee reports. Just wondering if the board is still receptive to those being in the packet. 
if you still like those or not because there's there's a time consumption of putting those in there and in it, the uh, consent agenda yes yes and it's, it was board directive to actually uh, uh, make these happen every quarter so just uh, looking for feedback on that one um, other, other than that um, uh, I guess I'll uh, just wish everybody a happy holidays Merry Christmas Happy New Year thank you uh, Treasurer Ferrari of uh, course my feedback on that I, twice a year would be fine for me if you wanted to kind of cut down on the workload it doesn't matter i just want to reaffirm on that you know the work isn't going no it needs to be done yeah and then just like sharp engineering's report maybe have that in the consent agenda too so then you know in case we have any questions on that uh pete thank you so much for years of service really appreciate that i mean you've done so much for this community thank you we can never repay you matt welcome the board if you need anything from us you know where all seven of us are at and that merry christmas and happy new year Trustee Nold. Thank you again to the fire department for Pete and Matt moving in. Uh, wish happy holidays to all the board members and safety for the entire township for this holiday season. Trustee Payne. My feedback on the committee reports would be that as, as things arise, if there's anything to report, then we get a report. Otherwise, if there's no meetings, if nothing's going on, then we shouldn't get a report. You shouldn't put your time into it. Um, and thank you, Pete, and good luck, Matt. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. Trustee Colvin. Yes, congrats, Chief Pete. Congrats, Matt. Chief Matt. Um, and yeah, happy holidays. Wow. Hope everyone has a great Christmas. Happy New Year. Okay, thank you. I have a couple. One, I want to let you know what's going on in the building department. As of November 1st, we have wrote over 1,766 permits, wow. which totals $1,025,000 in licensing ap applications and permits and inspection fees. $1,025,000. Uh, we are... Uh, 400 just for an example 403 electricals that 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 keeps an inspector busy to the point where we're looking at expanding as our need comes up but the building department is moving right along with the advent of the service pros we're rolling it out slowly it's working but we're not just jamming it right away to cause us problems the inspectors are utilizing it and developers are getting pins they can log in, set their own inspection rate, and make things run more efficiently. Uh, thirdly, uh, our, I reported out at the beginning of the year, we had 244 expired permits but weren't closed. Through the help of Annalia Shaner, Tim, London, Cheryl, uh, we are down to under 40. Wow. And those are mostly current building permits that, uh, when I say current, uh, they're one year old, uh, so the people are being contacted to reissue. The building department is booming. Uh, we are looking at removing residential bond requirements. Uh, right now, currently, we have $304,000 in uncollected building bonds for residential projects. $100 here, $100 there. Uh, it totals up to $304,000. It's almost an unnecessary evil to uh, account for, track, pay back, collect. So we're, we're investigating that. Um, one thing I do want to do in 2023 uh, is review the wage schedules for upcoming years. And secondly, a capital improvement plan. This building is becoming older. <clears throat> Things are failing. We have uh, mechanicals that are getting to the age of replacement. We need to start planning on some of these things rather than me coming to say, we got to spend four grand for a, a furnace or something like that. So we'll be reviewing that. Thank you, Joe, for taking the meeting last week while I was off. Uh, other than that, uh, Pete, uh, you brought it from a Jeep to see what is it 16 million in assets hmm. i look for matt to double that in the next couple of years <laughs> uh, a little challenge there 
I know we at one time had one Jeep and uh, a fire truck and all the guys standing around on it. Now we have a professional firefighting uh, department with over 16 million in assets and that just doesn't happen without great leadership. So Matt, you got some big shoes to fill. Pete, you got some new shoes to put on. Thank you very much. I'll Merry make, Christmas, happy holidays. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. A uh, motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed.